If you were to go back and trace the roots of the one-on-one -on -one fighter, it would have to be the 1979 Sega arcade game Warrior. Now to be fair, this one did feature weapons instead of traditional hand-to-hand -hand combat, but from what I've been able to gather, this was the first one. Martial arts games were more commonplace as home computers started becoming more popular in the early 1980s. The initial offerings were nothing more than stick figures which looked a lot like the Battle of the Matchstick Men. That is, until we received the beautiful, cinematic, fantastic computer game Karatika. What is rotoscoping and how does it figure into our game? So wax on, wax off young grasshopper. This is the history of Karatika. The year is 1982 and Yale student Jordan Mechner is trying to get his first game published. The game in question was Death Bounce, an asteroids clone written for the Apple II. At the time, games were basic concepts even on the computers. One game would get you three lives with the goal being to see what your high score would be. In 1982, the Apple II had a huge following and some would say was the best unit for arcade style gameplay despite only having four colors, limited sound, and only 48k of memory. He had split the cost of the machine with his father with only one goal in mind. He wanted to create arcade games at home so he wouldn't have to keep feeding quarters into a machine. After submitting the game to his favorite publisher Broderbund, the game was rejected. However, a light bulb went off in his head when he realized he could just make something original and not have to rely on clones of existing games. While attending Yale University, Mr. Mechner was taking film classes as well as karate classes on the side. This is where he first got the idea of a martial arts game only with a much more cinematic approach. Mr. Mechner was also inspired by Ukiyo-e, which featured artwork from the 17th century of kabuki actors and scenes all throughout history painted on wooden blocks. He also took inspiration from the cinematic works of Akira Kurosawa. Since he was going for a more movie-like feel, he wanted the animation to reflect this. He was inspired by the early Max Fleischer and Walt Disney cartoons which use a technique called rotoscoping. Rotoscoping involves hand-painted cartoons that were traced over actual frames of film footage. This creates a very realistic effect. Fleischer Studios actually created and patented this back in 1917. But once the patents expired, Walt Disney started using the process in their films. Mr. Mechner had borrowed his father's Super 8 camera and videotaped himself running and jumping as reference points for his character. He was not happy with this, so he recorded his karate instructor, his father, and his sister, which yielded much better results. He had wanted to include both music and animation at the same time, but due to the limitation of the Apple II, he was only able to use one note musical cues. Keep in mind that the entire game is equivalent in size to one standard text message on your cell phone. His father ended up composing all of the music for the game. Overall, the game took nearly two years to complete in between his classes at the university. Once it was complete, he submitted it to Broderbund and they happily accepted it. Over the span of his life, the game has sold over 700,000 copies. Karatika was released in 1984 for the Apple II. You take on the role of an unnamed fighter who was tasked with rescuing a woman named Mariko, who was being held captive at the top of a mountain by the evil Akuma. The game opens with a fantastic cutscene that shows Akuma banishing Mariko to a prison cell while you finally make it to the top of the mountain.
The game sees you traversing from left to right as you encounter enemy upon enemy as you make your way to the palace doors. Initially, you are running towards the palace, but once you encounter a fighter, you enter your fighter stance. If you are still in your running stance and the enemy fighter manages to hit you, it will result in an instant death. A very cool feature is the ability to bow at your opponent before you begin your fight, which results in your opponent bowing as well. At this point, you have a few types of punches and kicks. Each hit you take will remove a health point and vice versa. Your health bar will replenish. So if you find yourself getting your butt handed to you, then back off and let your health regenerate. On the original Apple II version before and after each fight, your fighter will let out a digitized battle cry. It's too bad the Commodore 64 version didn't include this feature, but it did have much better music and speed. If you notice on Akuma's shoulder, there is a giant hawk which at some point will fly down and attack you. This is very frustrating because the hawk is very powerful and is not that easy to hit. Once you defeat all of his minions, you finally get to face Akuma himself. His health bar is massive. That's what she said. So you've got to be both quick and cautious when facing him. Now warning, I am going to spoil the ending. So if you plan on playing the game, then by all means, stop this video. But make sure you leave a like first. After you defeat Akuma, you enter the prison cell of Mariko. 99.9% .9 of the people who initially played this game would slowly walk up to Mariko still in their fighting stance. If you did this, as soon as you got close enough to her, she would throw out one punch and kill you. Game over, hasta la vista, that is it. The only way to complete the game is to run towards her and not be in a fighting stance. Once you do this, she welcomes you into her open arms and you embrace while the credits roll. One thing I have to mention before going any further is the proper pronunciation of the word karateka. For the last 36 years, I've pronounced it just as it looks, karateka. Now I may just be a dumb hick from the sticks with corn and wheat up to my eyeballs, but that's how I've always pronounced it. A few months ago, I saw a video in which Mr. Mechner was discussing the game and this was how he pronounced it. I called it karateka. So in my opinion, the guy is a great game designer, but he sucks at pronunciation. When the game first starts up and you climb up from the mountain, it's possible to walk backwards and fall right back off to your death. On the original Apple II version, even though it only comes on one floppy, if you flip it over and attempt to boot the game, it will load everything upside down. This was done as a joke by Mr. Mechner. There were a boatload of conversions for this game, with a grand total of 16, not including the remakes. I am going to cover a few of these, but not all of them, as they are all pretty similar. When I first got my Commodore 64 back in 1986, one of the very first games I received was Karateka. Never before had I seen a game with such smooth animation and fantastic cutscenes. It felt as if you were actually a part of an interactive movie. Yes, the gameplay is a little slow, which tends to throw your timing off just a bit, but I still thoroughly enjoyed it growing up. The digitized battle cries are missing as well as the sounds that the hawk makes when attacking. Thanks to the increased capability of the Commodore 64, we get music and animation at the same time. Overall, this is an excellent version for the good old Commodore 64. Let's take a quick look at the Atari 800 version. This looks very similar to the Commodore, but seems to be running just a little bit faster. The animation is just as smooth as the Apple and Commodore versions, 
but the blows that the fighters land feels like they have more weight. The controls are essentially identical to the previous versions, and we even get some pretty good music and sound. If we're going based on graphics alone, it doesn't get much better than the Atari ST version. We get large, detailed sprites with lots of colors and smooth animation. The controls are decent, with the hit detection being just a bit iffy in certain spots. Everything from the original is here, only enhanced, including the cutscenes. This game was never officially released for the Amiga, but a homebrew version was released a couple of years ago. How about a couple to stay away from? Take for example the Game Boy version. This was called Master Karatika and was only released in Japan, thankfully. After selecting which level you start on, the game starts up with your character seemingly running on ice. The initial fighters only require three hits to kill, so this is essentially a stripped down version of the original. Something else that was stripped out of this version was any enjoyment whatsoever. Another stinker we are looking at is the Atari 7800 version. While the Atari 8-bit computer version was fantastic, this is about 300 steps in the opposite direction. Now even though the speed of the game is very fast, the animation is very choppy. The hit detection is way off with some blows obviously hitting your opponent but not registering. The cutscenes have also been redone but not for the better. Instead of running from left to right to get to the palace, you essentially have a series of fights similar to Street Fighter and other one-on-one -on -one fighting games. The music and sound effects are also pretty bad. Oh, did I also mention that there is a bug where the hawk that attacks you is sometimes invincible? Yeah, good luck with that. After almost 30 years, Mr. Mechner released a remake of Karatika on Xbox Live, PlayStation Network, and the Wii U. The game takes full advantage of the updated capabilities of the existing systems and creates a unique scrolling interactive movie, very similar to what the original did back on the Apple II. The controls are easy to pick up but are difficult to master. This was one of the first games my son was able to pick up and play and he was only four years old. The graphics are fantastic as are the cutscenes. You still only have one life in this game but if you fail you do get to play as a couple of other characters to continue the story. A very unique way to give you a couple of extra chances that younger players will surely appreciate. I really enjoyed this remake and it's currently available on Steam for less than $2. So if you like the original, you might want to check this out. Mr. Mechner would go on to create Prince of Persia, another classic franchise that would even spawn a major motion picture, but that's a different story for a different day. In 1984, there was nothing like Karatika on the market. It was absolutely groundbreaking and even by today's standards, it's still a beautiful game. If you want to try this out and have never played it before, I would say stick with the Atari 8-bit version which seems to be the best one in my opinion. You'll be glad you did. If you like this video and want to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Also, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my content. It's the only way my channel can grow. Thank you so much for watching.